Coming to you live from Digital Address GA0992539 in Kukumemi Accra on DSTV channel 421, Go TV channel 144. Social media handle for Facebook, Twitter and Instagram is Joy News on TV. Our WhatsApp number is 55 815 I am a piece of CBD and this is Joy News Interactive. Now, Energy Minister John Peter Amaru has asked Ghanaians to pardon him and the Akufu led government for the intermittent power cut that hit the country at least two weeks ago. Assuring the nation that the worst of the temporary power cuts are over, he apologized to Ghanaian businesses and homes who have been inconvenienced by the situation. <laughs> Well, as a government and as an energy minister, um, I want to say uh, very sorry to Ghanaians, especially those uh, that have experienced uh, this uh, period of intermittent power supply. Uh, of course, as a minister, uh, I'm responsible. That is why I'm here. I take the blame. Uh, uh, but I want to assure them that uh, uh, it's, it was as a result of you know a number of events that have occurred, and this has nothing you know to do with financial issues. It has nothing to do with a planning system. But it's a mere coincidence of events that occurred as a result of contingencies that are unforeseen. And as a ministry, we put in measures, as I've stated earlier on, to make sure that we address this. We want to apologize for that and, and let them understand that this will never happen again. We should endure, we, we will endure some intermittent power supply for some time. How long should we endure this? How long will the intermittent cuts endure? Uh, intermittent in terms of technical emergencies, yes. uh, again, it would be very difficult for me to, okay. uh, 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 to, to, to establish. But as I stated earlier on, ECG on its own is doing what we call uh, power intensification project. And some of this project is aimed at cutting down or minimizing uh, this uh, intermittent supply that we may mm -hmm. witness as a result of but technical But what, what we experienced the last two weeks, when it, when it, has it stopped? What we experienced in the last, in the last week, that prompted your press conference has it stopped? Yes, of course we have we have addressed that. Okay. Energy Minister John Peter Amaru on PM Express last night. Man, let's see how people have been reacting to this on social media. We're going to start with Abdul, who says, that's great. It shows that you're a good leader. I was actually preparing some erratic and intermittent slaps for you. And he got five reactions to that comment. Francis Walanyo Pampa says, you are a man and we need people like you in our politics. Uh, Commander at large says, we are all humans and will understand you. Go and sin no more. At Ben Chesh says, the kitchen is just too hot for this administration. Even with 111 ministers, the 11, the level of incompetence being displayed is enormous. Alexandra Sam says, power outage is still going on. And so don't say two weeks ago, even just now, Takwa is off. Kwabena uh, Fosu says, no need to apologize, Minister. We understand it. It's even good to experience a month or two of intermittent power cuts. This will remind some of us who have a short memory the feel and damages of doing so in some years back. Oxbird says, ah, two weeks ago, we're still in the thing. And you are saying there two weeks ago. Ernest Osei Brock who says, what is intermittent? It is doom so. Henry comes in to comment and says, tell your people to stop the noise and start fixing it. Uh, King says, uh, you take the blame. What's the meaning of that? And Patrick uh, comes in to say that don't joke with people's lives and businesses. A mere political public apology can't restore lives and losses incurred for two consecutive weeks power failure. Uh, you can only get away with this as a minister in Ghana. If it were in any serious country, you would have been laid off by now. Majid Wan says, thought NPP said they have solved it, but now again pretending reckless negotiation on generators. Our NPP, not the people who bought in the generator in this country to solve the doom. So, hey, Ghana politics, party all over. 
Abdul Hanan says, that's great. It shows that you are a good leader. You can keep sending us your comments on Facebook and Twitter. We are Joy News on TV. Our WhatsApp line is 055-815-7074. Now, I want you to look at the following pictures. That is two-year-old Titi. She is the daughter of rapper Sakodie. Now, two days ago, comedian Waris tweeted this. Let's see if we can get that tweet. Sakodie's daughter is becoming ripe. Very soon, we people will tear, tear and eat with two laughing emojis there. I'm going to repeat that tweet for you. Sakodie's daughter is becoming ripe. Very soon, we people will tear and eat. Now, this tweet set social media on fire, and a lot of people are upset about these comments. Let's see what they have been saying on various social media platforms. Uh, we're going to start with Abigail Annie, who says, Then Sakuria comes out to say that he's not really offended about the joke. Now, he knew Waris was just joking. Uh, it is no doubt what he posted was totally wrong, but two wrongs don't make a right, you saints. This evening, self, you chop. Bitter people all over. Kofi Ose comes and say that what happened to Waris can happen to many of us here. It's a joke, but you need to double think it and think one last time before you let it out. Some matters are so dangerous and sensitive you jump when you see them. Sorry sometimes is not enough. Even though you will gradually be forgiven, the fire you receive is to serve as a deterrent to many others who may ever want to repeat that joke. I believe this morning many have learned from this and it's a process we're gradually getting there. Let us continue to learn and free ourselves of some of these things. At Gottfried Nana Ousu says, the joke, hashtag comedian Waris posted, which carried sexual advances at Sakuri's two-year-old daughter, was needless and a total goof. Waris, you just gave the feminist free topic to munch on, and now you're ripe. Sit back, relax, and watch them tear and eat you. Joel Salom says, I now understand why Ghana comedy is not doing so well, it is not that our comedians are not good or Ghanaians have little sense of humor. How do you take comedian wars post so serious when you know the motive behind it? All right, uh, this one is from at the Pepper Dem Ministries and they say, so this self style comedian wars also known in life as wars Abdul on Twitter chose today of all days, hashtag 16 days of activism, activism to be a disgusting person, sexualizing a child and his other idiotic friends think it's funny. Whose sons are these? You are trash. And tell me one more time that pervasive rape culture is only a figment of imagination. At Amma K says, I don't know what kind of sick world we live in, when a so-called comedian in Ghana thinks it is okay to make sexual jokes about Sakuria's daughter. A little two-year-old child, I must add. Why would anyone in their right mind think it's okay? It's not funny, it's very sick and it's disgusting. And then he, she tells us about the update that the comedian has apologized. So this one is from at the Nanaba who says, so Waras has spoken apologetically about his tweet to her as human. Let's forgive him. It takes a strong person to say sorry and an even stronger person to forgive. And cheers to Waras. This one is from at Nalami who says, uh, this is wrong on so many levels. Shame on anyone who as much as has perverted mind over a little child. FYI, there's a name for it pedophilia congratulations you've just showed the world what an idiot you are 
this one was also from Pepper Dem Ministries, and they say this is not comedy. Sexualizing a two-year-old is never comedy and shouldn't be framed as such. It is dangerous and enabling. If you have nothing I add to stop this menace of overt sexism, then please don't speak at all. It's a joke, so he gets a pass. Let's get serious. And the last Facebook comment I'm going to take is from Faith Masindi, who says, anyone saying, forgive him, move on, it was just a joke. You've clearly missed the point. You're being what we call a rape apologist. We cannot move on because this forgive them, he was just playing, kind of thinking is how we build a society where people walk around thinking it is okay to help themselves to others' bodies. Such a joke should never ferment in someone's head, let alone be spoken out loud or posted on social media. A few hours later, he apologized via his Twitter handle. Let's watch the video. First of all, I'm deeply sorry for the tweet I made concerning Sarkodie's daughter. I am not a pedophile and then I don't encourage it. I'm very sorry for exposing the child to it and then I'll do anything possible to fight against it. Um, I'm a human. I, I am not perfect. I made a mistake. The tweet wasn't meant to actually cause that kind of harm, but it's rather unfortunate the tweet, the, the joke went bad. I'm very sorry. Find a place in my heart and then forgive me, as you can see. Well, let's hear from one person who is upset with the post, and that is Mame Equia Arabwa, and she is the COO of 360 Lifestyle Network, founder of Dear, also of Dear Survivor. Good morning. Good morning. So how are you? I'm good. How are you? Now, I'm, I'm livid. Now, let's, okay, so the tweet says, um, Sakodia's daughter is becoming ripe. Very soon, people will eat and tear and tear and eat her all right she's two years old what's so problematic about this tweet i think what, what's problematic about the tweet and why people are so um, engaged is that first of all it tells of a culture where it's not it's normalized to sexualize and objectify young children and young girls especially we're looking at a culture where it's okay to call a baby or oh, my young wife my small wife and that's okay and that tells you how how much sexualize children because obviously you're not going to be praying and cooking your love with your wife. Obviously wives are at a different level of of, of relationship that you have with with, with with women, older women. And so for us in our culture, we, we're trying to say that it's not just about it being Sarkodie's daughter because that's not the issue. It could have been anybody's daughter and would be equally outraged because the issue is that we should not have a culture or a society where it's okay for grown men to sit on social media and laugh about sexualizing two-year-olds or three-year-olds or four-year-olds or even 15-year-olds. It's not okay. The laws are in place for a reason. It is not okay. And to say that, oh, it's just a joke, and so let's just overlook it, is like saying that, oh, it's okay to joke about killing babies. That's fine. Because, you know, it's just a joke. It's coming from a comedian. But we see a culture that is speaking across the world where comedians in other countries are becoming so socially aware that they are the ones who are raising the issues. They are the ones who are speaking to the issues and they are using comedy to do so. And so you cannot, you can no longer hide behind, it's just a joke. To perpetrate rape culture and to perpetrate the pedophilic uh, mindset that you hold or to normalize, sexualize the children, that is not okay. And we cannot be okay with that. And any society that is okay with that is not safe. Mm -hmm. In Shana crimes, they will not be doing that. It is not safe and it's not okay. Now, how do we move on? Like, where do we go from here? I mean, but, um, so as you know, organizations like Dear Survivor, OCB Global, and, and uh, many others, CDM, for example, are doing the work when it comes to educating uh, um, the populace and talking about the issues and talking about how toxic narratives are, are, are detrimental 
to, to our society. And a lot of the times in Ghana, we tend to think that, oh, until the person actually does the act or engages in the act of, of, of raping somebody or of, of molesting a child, then it's not that serious. And so anything surrounding it doesn't matter until it actually happens. That is wrong. Because once we normalize, what we do is that you're able to joke about you desensitize yourself to the seriousness and the weight of the trauma that is exacted against these children that go through sexual violence at young ages and older ages. It's, and, and people just think it's just girls. It's not just girls. It's boys as well. And we're okaying it by saying, you know, it's fine. Oh, we, girls should, oh, you're my small wife. Come and sit on my lap. And mothers would sit down and watch that and laugh and mm. say, oh, that's my uncle. And and, and older women would say, oh, that's my small husband. And that's okay. And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be okay. And so right now what we need to do is to focus on how many, on, on, on educating and also to focus on speaking to the statistics and talking about exactly how many children are being abused. Because it would surprise people to know that 95% of sexually abused children are abused by people who they know who mothers see and say, oh, it's okay, sit on their lap, oh, my small wife, and they overlook it. And with older women who say, oh, my small husband, and they would overlook it. And they, they are so oblivious to the fact that their children are in danger, mostly 95% of the time, from people that they know, from people that they trust, that they see their parents talking to. We're talking about approximately 20% of girls being molested before they are 18. 35% of women being molested, being raped before they are in, the, in, their, in their entire lifetime, in fact. 35% of women and girls being molested and raped, 35%, that's one in three. One in three women that you meet every day have been raped or had some sort of sexual violence and acted against you. You cannot tell me that that is not a problem. And so our major focus is to educate people to know that these are real-life situations. You cannot joke with people's trauma and say, oh, it's just a joke. It's not just a joke. People do not take kindly to white people making jokes about black people. So why do you think it's okay to take lightly jokes about raping children? That's not okay. And anybody who sits down and says that it's okay is a rape apologist, and they need to be dragged as much as worse as being dragged. And quite frankly, any apology that starts with, to those offended, is not an apology because then you're saying you don't see what's wrong with what you said but because people are offended and they're dragging you so you're about to apologize to those who you've offended so you don't see that there's a problem with the entirety of what it is that you said but you're just saying oh don't, stop dragging me so let me just apologize and get it over with and he, and you have a journalist so-called a journalist saying it's okay that is not okay we do not have to forgive people. Like That's what people do. We live in a country where men rape girls, and, people, and pastors and, and, and ace journalists tell us that, oh, you know, it's let's okay. just mm -hmm. forget it because they have apologized. But what about the victims? What about the girls who have to watch their back everywhere they go? What about the women who cannot walk down the street from work? What about the women who cannot go to church and worship their God in peace because they're being harassed? These are not okay jokes to make. They are real-life situations that cause real life drama and until we trauma and, on, and until we actually acknowledge this, mm -hmm. we cannot move forward as a people and we cannot claim to be a morally upright society when these kinds of jokes are normalized and okay. All right. Thank you so much for that. Uh, some jokes are just too expensive and on that note I'm going to take a quick breather. When we come back we're talking throwback Thursday. <laughs> Welcome back from that breather. You're still watching Join News Interactive with me, Mapita Sibidi. Now, a Mississippi pastor got his Sunday sermon off to a flying start this week by gliding into his pulpit on a Hollywood-style lift. In a dramatic stunt, apparently meant to illustrate the unexpected nature of the second coming of Jesus Christ, uh, the Reverend Or flew into the auditorium preaching into a microphone down the entire way. Watch this. He's coming. He's coming again. Jesus Christ is on his way back. We've already read it even in the devotion that scripture, Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 
uh, says that that day is going to come when the sky is cracked and Jesus Christ comes again and every eye will see him when he come again. And so here's our question for you this morning, brothers and sisters. The simple question is this right here. Are you ready? Are you ready for his return? Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Are you ready for his return? Brothers and sisters, are you ready today for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you ready? Now the stunt earned Reverend Orr the nickname The Flying Preacher. And that's how we end today's edition of Joy News Interactive with me, Mabita CBD. Join me tomorrow as I tell you about the most watched videos of the week. You can send us your messages on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. The handle is Joy News on TV. I leave you with our video of the day. Mm -hmm.